Hello, I'm Josiah Stevens, and it's my mom, Sheila Stevens, and we're here to help with devotion today. So, Josiah, tell me, what are your thoughts about this whole coronavirus thing? Um, I think it's a, a real difficult time for everyone in the world because there's just a lot of unknown factors to do with it, and it's just a lot of uncertainty. It is. It is a lot of uncertainty right now. And even right now, we are asked to stay in, don't go out, and things like that. So we have a whole lot of time at home. So what are some things that you found to do during this time? Um, personally, I've just been really watching TV, reading, working out, okay. playing the game, stuff like that. So let's talk about the, play, the uh, working out part. So what are some things that you do when you work out? Um, push-ups, sit-ups, nothing too serious. Nothing too serious, but you do something. So it seems like there are times when you are trying to do some things that are constructive and use your time. And I think that we need to be reminded of that during this time where we are at home and have to stay in. What are some things that we are going to choose to do that are positive and that are constructive and that will keep us on the right, on the right focus? Um, you know, Jesus even, when he went to the cross, and Easter will be coming up on April the 12th, and they say that when he had to carry that beam all the way to Calvary on his back, they said that weighed anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds. Well, you think about carrying something 100 pounds on your back for miles and miles. Did you enjoy that? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> So I'm just thinking about God's love. He was willing to do that and take a whole lot more because he knew that this day would be here. Corona is not new to him. And he was willing to go through all that he went through so that we could have hope for a day like today. So just like you chose to work out, I want us to think about what will we choose today to do with the time? Well, how will we choose to respond to what's going on? I know you were looking at some scriptures, so uh, tell me what you found that was encouraging for you during this time. I found it. I thought a pretty good scripture, and one of them being, um, let's go to it. One of them was Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Okay. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then I also found, excuse me, Deuteronomy 20 and 4. For the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. All right. That's good stuff, Josiah. So what I learned from those scriptures in our devotional today is that we do not have to fear. Because we need to focus in on our God. And he will be our strength. Would you bow in prayer with us? Most gracious God, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you that a long time ago, you already knew about all of this. We want to thank you for all that you have done to help us through a day like this. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask a special blessing upon those people that are in the front lines helping everyone that's going through these tough times. Dear Heavenly Father, for those that have had loved ones that have passed, for those that have people in their families that are sick, for those that have people that they cannot get to. We are so glad that we have you and that we can call upon your Holy Spirit to be there where we cannot be there. You are our peace, dear Heavenly Father. You are our joy. You are our everything. Help us to choose you. Help us to keep our mind and our focus on you. Help us to allow you to come and touch our hearts and tell us those things that you would have us to do, how to help someone, how to encourage someone, how to forgive someone, in some instances, just how to, to be quiet and to listen. Lord, we just ask for you to keep your loving arms of protection around us. We ask that you help us to be that light to shine so that others can see love when they come in contact with you, with us. And we just want to say thank you, God. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for staying with us. And we know that you are a keeper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good to see you, family. Thank you. Bye-bye.
I miss you all so much. I miss the hugs. I miss the face-to-face -face interaction. I miss the hellos and the energy we all have when we're together, just praising and worshiping God with one spirit, one heart, one body. I miss that so much. But it was certainly good to see those of us who who uh, logged in and joined us virtually for prayer service and Bible study on this past Wednesday. It simply made my heart smile to see from our, our seasoned adults, uh, saints, to our youth who were represented. And we were definitely blessed. Reverend Williams really did an awesome job with the lesson on Wednesday night. But if you did not get a chance to join that's okay. We'll be sending out another link on Monday or Tuesday of this week to share with you. And when you get it, if you know someone that does not have it, please share it with them uh, so that we can all be together. I know that uh, Reverend Williams has, is really challenging us in the word of the Lord, church, and he has given us a lot of assignments, but that's okay. This is a good time where we are self-isolating to really read and, and, um, study the word of God. Um, but join us because we need to see you. Um, these past few weeks have been challenging. And for those of us who are used to moving around and coming and going, this has all been such a humbling experience. Um, but I pray that we are all in our homes and we are safe and that we're praying for each other. I mean, yes, we should pray for our families, but it is also important to pray for each other, keep each other lifted up and to pray for our city and our state, our nation, our world uh, and all those who are suffering with this virus and all those who are on the front lines taking care of those who are suffering. We need to pray, church. We really do. So take this time out to do just that. Um, but I have come to the mind of over these last few weeks. And it's something that every morning I get up and say, and that is, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it. And I want to encourage you to say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice in it. And do you know why I've come to that? Because the blood still works. This morning, I want to remind some and I want to share with others that the the blood will never lose its power. I just want to visit with us just for a couple of moments on Luke 22, and we're only going to read verse 20. Again, Luke 22, verse 20. And you will find recorded there. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Yes, today is the first Sunday of the month and how fitting it is that we set aside this time on first Sundays of each month to remember the sacrifices that Jesus made. But it is also just as important for us to remember our commitment to Jesus as Christians to live out the example that he has set before us while he was living his life here on earth. A life that was not in ease and not without struggles, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. He lived teaching and preaching and healing and performing miracle after miracle. His life, which suffered in a brutal and even an excruciating, painful way, did not negate his purpose. For in the time of the torture and pain, Jesus still blessed us. That's why in the midst of crisis, while we are, are in this time and in this moment when people are getting sick and some are dying and we're not able to leave our homes unless we're going out for things that we need it, that are essentials. Uh, we are not being able to work, and some of us have lost our jobs, and which is threatening our livelihood. And we're not able to go to church and worship together. Some of us have to get up every day and go stand face to face with this to care for those who are suffering right now. 
But church, it, it's important that we do not forget about Calvary. At the Passover dinner, which we have come to call the Lord's Supper, Jesus makes a blood covenant. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Now, a covenant is an agreement between two or more persons to do or not do something specified. The Bible defines a covenant as a conditional promise that God makes with humanity, in which God, God promised to protect if we are faithful to him. This lets us know that the blood Jesus shed on Calvary has us covered. And we do not have to worry as those who, who, who have no hope for our hope is in Jesus. What Jesus did on Calvary that is dying for us did not only give us the right to eternal life, but his sa uh, sacrificial death also provides for us a keeping grace. And as we journey toward eternal life and in certainly as we go through the crisis in which we now face church, what Jesus did on Calvary is our keeping grace as we make our way through. It is the cup of blessing, not blessings. It is not about receiving blessings, but being already blessed. It is the blessing of God on our lives for salvation and eternal life. Now, some may ask the question, if salvation here is the relief from earthly cares or if salvation means eternal life in the end. And I understand the essence of Jesus' work for us for eternal life, but in the work of eternal life, there was also the work of relief from concerns on earth. So yes, the third cup was the cup of blessing. Blessing that Jesus in John 17 lifted his eyes toward heaven and pray to the Father for us. A prayer where Jesus really showed the nature and heart of who he really is. He interceded on our behalf. It was a prayer where many of the same concerns in what is commonly known as the Lord Prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 13 are here in John 17. Verse 20 states, my prayer is not for them, the disciples only. I pray for those who will believe in me through the disciples' message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. But then he says, the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. That is his love for us. His concern for us compels Jesus to offer up our care to the Father at the time when he knew that he was facing death. Jesus set the cup apart as a token of salvation and blessing before passing it to the 12 disciples. Oh, for the early church, honoring the Lord's Supper was a regular and cherished practice, a time when believers remembered their Savior's death and celebrated their common salvations and eternal life, which reflected their perfect spiritual oneness. Yes, the blood covers us. No matter what we are going through, the blood covers it. If I'm sick in my body, the blood covers it. Abused and misused, the blood covers it. Guilt and shame, the blood covers it. The blood gives us strength from day to day. Every day that I can take my cares to the Lord at the break of day, I am given the portion of strength that I need to make it through the day. I may be physically challenged because of the pain in my body, but in my mind and heart, I have all the peace and all the reassurance that I need to just keep pressing and keep moving. And if by chance, I wake up with the conflict, wake up conflicted in my mind and shameful in my heart, I can run to the throne of grace and be forgiven, restored and reassured. 
And if life seems to be overtaking me at the moment and Satan appears to be winning, I can go to the father and know, trust and believe that not only has he paid, already paid the price, but he has the power to conquer it all. Church, the blood has no limits. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows through the lowest valley. It soothes our doubts. It calms our fears. It dries all of our tears. The blood will never lose its power. No, we don't have to worry as though we have no hope. The blood covers us. It covers us from day to day, and that is always. It will never lose is power. Trust in the Lord for Christ has already done the work and we are securing him. Church, the blood will never lose his power. No matter what we are facing today, no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, our issues that we may have, God is with us. Amen.
As we prepare to go to God in prayer this morning and lift up those who have requested special prayer, many of you have noted that the 91st Psalm has been a source of strength and comfort for you during this time. So I just want to start with reading that scripture for us so that we can meditate on this word as we go to God in confidence, knowing that God hears us and will answer our prayers. The 91st Psalm reads like this. We who dwell in the shelter of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, God is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Surely God will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. God will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you made the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is your refuge, then no harm will befall you, no disaster will even come near your tent. For God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because they love me, says the Lord, I will rescue them. I will protect them for they know and acknowledge my name. They will call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. Isn't that comforting to know that God will keep us in the midst of trials all around us? We thank God this morning. We had many of you to submit prayer requests. We know that we, this is a time to pray. We should be praying not only for ourselves and for our families, but for our entire world. For this pandemic is affecting us all. We had um, many of you to submit prayer requests online. Um, some of you have texted, and so we want to just go to God in prayer, call out your names, and remember those who um, 
have asked for special prayer for their families, those who are fighting this terrible, terrible disease, and um, those who, you know, are not able to stay at home every day, those who have to work on the front lines, those who are going out each and every day so that we can remain safe. We thank God for them, and we ask that we continue to lift them up. Those who are um, first responders, those on the front lines, uh, medical professionals, those who work in the grocery industry, those truckers and auto drivers um, who still deliver goods so that we can survive, those who work for FedEx and UPS, those restaurant workers and child care providers, the educators, the volunteers, um, the chaplains and pastors. Um, we want to lift up those bus drivers, the firemen, firefighters, police officers, all of those people who still go out to work every day. We do want to lift all of them up because we know that um, they are going out and working each and every day and they're not able to stay at home with their families. And so we do want to lift them in prayer. We also want to lift up those child welfare workers who still have to do investigations and visits. We pray for those children who are home with um, their abusers, those persons who are dealing with domestic violence situations, and they are trapped at home as well. So we're praying for all of these situations in the midst of what's going on. Sister Deborah Goodman asked for prayer also for those who are struggling with being in isolation, being at home alone, um, that we would all have a spirit of contentment. Reverend Williams led us in a wonderful Bible study this week talking about the contentment um, that hopefully all of us have. And also he talked about this nuanced new normal. And so if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, we recommend that you do that as well. We also want to lift up Sister Cindy Driver, Sister Dee Dee Bowler, Brother Dwight Lewis, Brother uh, Sister Tina Paul, who is requesting prayer for Robinson and Nicole Lowe, and for her father, McClary Merritt, Sister Teola Trent and her family, Sister Linda Chaplin, Sister Althita Winford, for herself and her children, Tarina, Stefan, and Urena. Sister Sharon Roberson is asking for prayer for all of her children and grandchildren and the elderly, her uncle Laverne Jones, who is in a nursing facility in Los Angeles. Sister Joanne Fennell is requesting prayer for all nursing home residents and their caregivers, all that they come in contact with. Reverend Potter is requesting prayer for all the kingdom workers, for our church leadership, for our church family, the Potter and the Shannon family, the nation and all of our national leaders, those who are caring for us, the world and all God's children. Gerald Brown is requesting prayer for himself and all the FedEx workers. Dolores Norton and her family are requesting prayer. Reverend Hope Brown, Sister Diane Jones is requesting prayer for Jean Jones III and for Lynette Dixon. We also want to lift up Sister May Helen Potter. We are also um, lifting up Sister Sean Wright and her family. Danielle and Marco Williams, they are medical professionals who have to go out each day. So we're praying for them. Sister Tammy Starks is requesting prayer for her cousin, Annie White. Her mother is in ICU. Her uncle Conrad McKinney, her grandson, Jaden Jackson. Uh, Pastor Mayberry is requesting prayer for Talia and the new, her new grandbaby, Nova, and the entire Mayberry family. For Sister Joanne Thomas for her health. Sister Leah and Gloria Maxwell are requesting prayer. Sister Dewana Stevens, Sister Alberta Hamilton. Sister Sheila Stevens is requesting prayer for Vince Ruby and her entire family. Marion Bilberry is requesting prayer for her family and Aaliyah for her daughter as she makes some decisions about her next moves in life. We want to be in prayer for them. Sister Helen Bikes is requesting prayer for her daughter, Mary Robinson and her granddaughter who live in California. Barbara Johnson is requesting prayer for her family. Regina Tyler is requesting prayer for Isis 
Rebecca and her entire family, for her friend and co-worker, Mary Taves, who is fighting for her life right now. We want to definitely lift her up for her entire church family, for all who have lost jobs and lost loved ones. We want to lift them up. Sister Frida Walker is requesting prayer for her son, Keith, who lives in New York right now. We want to lift him in prayer. Sister Andrea Collins is requesting prayer for Precious Collins. Sister Sharon Roberson is requesting prayer for her mom, Joe Roberson. Sister Tracy Ray is requesting prayer for all of the teachers and students and parents as we figure out this online learning. Um, and Sister Tia Pankey requested prayer for all of the firefighters, police officers, bus drivers, and everyday people who must go out on the front lines. We want to thank God for um, Sister Deborah Goodman brought up the point that we thank God for the technology to be able to connect even when we are distant from each other. We thank God that God hears our prayers wherever we are, whatever we're doing, even when we can't form the words, even when we don't know what to say. God hears the moans and groans of our spirits. God knows what's on our minds. God knows the things that we don't share with anybody else, those secret things. And we thank God that he is well able to keep us. We thank God that we have the opportunity to come to God in prayer, say whatever we want, and trust that it will be okay. We want to, we know that there may have been some who didn't have the opportunity to turn your name in, or there may have been more since you submitted your request. We want to give you a moment to call out those names, wherever you are. Call out those names who are on your heart. We know that parents, even when your children are grown, even when they are away from your homes, your children, your grandchildren are always on your heart. So take a moment now to call out those names and know that God hears us. Gracious and loving God, how we thank you for another week, another day, another moment that was not promised. Each day we hear news reports, we hear stories, we see things on our Facebook timelines, on our Instagram accounts, on our Twitter feeds that tell us that trouble is all around us. Stories of people who have lost their lives. Stories of people who have lost loved ones. Stories of people who are lonely and don't know what to do. Stories of people who are struggling with mental illness right now. God, we thank you that we can run to you for shelter. We thank you that the words of the psalmist are true, that we can all testify, that we can find shelter and safety under your wings. We thank you, O oh God, that when we call upon your name, every time you answer, every time we even moan or wave our hands when we cry and shed tears. God, we know that you hear us and that you come to see about us. Thank you, O oh God, that you know each and every one of us by name. You know every hair that is on our heads. You know every thought that we think. You know every secret that we have. And we thank you, O oh God, that you still love us. Thank you, O oh God, that you have allowed us to be your children. Thank you, O oh God, that we can call on you anytime and trust that you hear us. Thank you, God, for each and every person who have submitted prayer requests. God, you know 
what we stand in need of. You know those things on our hearts, those things that keep us up at night. God, we pray for those who are on the front lines who must go out each and every day. We pray for those who have been affected financially. We pray for those, God, who are struggling with being in isolation, those who live alone. God, we pray for those who are trying to figure out um, and worry about their children who now have to do this distance online learning. We pray for those teachers. We pray for those staff members who are trying to determine what to do next so that their children don't fall behind. Lord, we know that there are those who, those police officers, those firefighters, those bus drivers, those FedEx workers, those child care workers, those who work in the grocery industry, those who don't have the opportunity to stay home. God, we just ask that you cover them with your blood in the name of Jesus. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, O oh God, that you can and you will keep us in the midst of this storm. Remind us, O oh God, that trouble won't last always. Remind us, O oh God, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Help us, O oh God, to hold on until the morning. Help us, O oh God, to hold on until the sun shines again. Help us, O oh God, to keep our hand in your hand and to remember that you promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We can rest in assurance that you have not forgotten about us. Thank you, O oh God, that every time we have needed you in the past, help us to recall the last time you brought us out. Help us to remember the last time we had trouble and we didn't know how to come out of it. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't have all of the answers. We thank you, O oh Lord, that even when we're trying to figure it out, we thank you, God, that you will work it out for us. Many of us are worried about family, we're worried about friends, we're worried about co-workers, we're worried about those in other parts of the country and the world. Give us peace right now. Comfort our hearts. Give us strength. Help us to hold on. Help us to stand in your word. Draw us nearer to you during this time. Help us not to forget that you are still God, that nothing is bigger than you. Nothing is more powerful than you. You can speak a word. You can snap your finger and all of this would change. Whatever lesson you have for us in this moment, whatever you would have us to do differently, God, we ask that you speak to us now. Help us to be whom you have called us to be. Help us to be the body of Christ that you have destined us to be. And we will forever give you the praise. Help us to still give you thanks. Help us to still give you glory. Even when there's trouble all around us. For you are still worthy of our praise. You are still worthy. God, and you are still good. We ask all of these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Antioch family, before we go this week, we want to remind you again that we want to make sure that we stay connected. Make sure that you are calling and texting each other. 
we need to hear from each other. We realize now more than ever that the church is not about the building. It is about the people. And we are a family. We want to make sure that we're calling, texting, um, Facebooking, checking on each other because we need each other to survive. If you're not already linked into our social media outlets, if you're not signed up for Flocknote, make sure that you do that today. You can text the keyword ABC Tulsa to the number 84576. That, may, that way you'll make sure that you're getting all of the email and text message updates from the church. You can also go to our Facebook page and like that page. That's Antioch Baptist dash Tulsa that will also make sure that you're getting all the updates from the church if you're on Instagram we're also on Instagram go to Antioch BC underscore Tulsa and you'll get all of our updates there if you are on YouTube you can go and subscribe to our YouTube channel that's Antioch Baptist Tulsa that's one word Antioch Baptist Tulsa and you'll get all of our updates for Bible study for morning worship and anything any videos that we place there if social media is not your thing that's okay too just call the church office and leave us a voicemail you can call 918-583-1620 make sure that you leave a voicemail because we are checking those regularly and we will get back with you just as soon as we can we just want you to remember that we are the church and we are here for you. If you need to contact Pastor Mayberry, you can email her at mmayberry at antioch-tulsa.com. If you need to get in contact with me, you can email me at achambers at antioch-tulsa.com. Or you can call me, leave me a voicemail on my phone, 918 583 one six four zero. If you need to contact the finance office, you can contact Paula Tees, and her email address is pts at tulsacoxmail.com. Again, we want to remind you again, family, that we want to remain committed and stay faithful in our giving. You can do so in multiple ways. You can mail a check or money order to the church. The address is 110 West 56th Street North. The zip code is 74126. You can cash app us. That's the easiest way. You can do that on your phone in a matter of seconds. You can go to Antioch Baptist Tulsa. The keyword is dollar sign Antioch Baptist Tulsa. One word, dollar sign Antioch Baptist Tulsa. And you can give um, in a matter of seconds that way. You can call the church office and do a credit or debit card over the phone. You can leave a voicemail for 918-583-1620, extension 3. That's Paula's voicemail, and she'll be glad to call you back and get that information for you. Um, also, you can set up ACH withdrawal, or you can bring your money to the church and place it in the brick mailbox. Please make sure that you do the brick mailbox, not the black one, because the brick mailbox is secure. Again, we want you to know that we love you. We're praying for you. We are here for you. God is with us, and we are here for you. God bless you until we see you again next week.